Hi everyone. In this video I am going to show you my third all-time favorite annihilator configuration. Now why third? Well, uh, even though this is a fairly new channel, I've done a bunch of videos here dedicated to the annihilator chassis in particular. And uh, as I've mentioned many times in my previous videos, I have three all-time favorite Annihilator configurations. Two of them I've shown already. Those were the variants. Uh, one of them was the ballistic variant loaded with the four LB10X solid slug autocannons. And then my second all-time favorite was... Uh, the all energy based variant ANH 1E loaded with the four PPCs. Finally, in this video, I will show you the third, my all time favorite configuration. However, spoiler alert this isn't going to be the most destructive or the most devastating loadout. As a matter of fact, this is probably going to be the least devastating and the least destructive configuration nevertheless i believe that this is a very important configuration it is a very capable configuration and it can yield a great results if it used uh, properly if you can use this right let me show you what i'm talking here about so this is going to be a ballistic variant, in this case it's ANH-2A, but uh, you can configure in exactly the same way the ANH-1A. It doesn't really matter which one of these you use, you can still configure them identically. So in this case, I've downgraded all the original autocannons to this four AC-5 burst fire autocannons. And then uh, I replaced the original medium pulse lasers with the standard medium lasers. Let's see what's inside. Yeah, as you can see, at a first glance it may seem like it's a downgrade, which it is in some ways. Nevertheless, as I've mentioned earlier, it is a very, very capable mech, and it's a very important configuration for certain circumstances. Now, in one of my previous uh, videos, I've shown you uh, this configuration loaded with the uh, four autocannons, uh, four ultra autocannons UAC-5s, which is uh, also a somewhat popular build, um, judging by a lot of uh, videos by uh, other people on YouTube. Nevertheless, this isn't uh, one of my favorite configurations, because, as I was uh, suggesting in that video, this UAC-5, uh, despite... Um, their great damaging potential, they aren't super precise at uh, very long ranges. Well, this is a uh, completely different story with this AC-5 burst fire autocannons. These are actually super precise long range weapons. When you look at the specs, it tells you that the maximum range is 775 meters, which doesn't look like a lot. However, in reality, this isn't necessarily true. In, real in reality, you can shoot much farther than that. You, uh, you can shoot twice as far as the advertise range. As a matter of fact, I've destroyed a bunch of targets with this um, mech far beyond uh, the sensor range. It's an excellent uh, sniper weapon. It has an excellent range. It's Again, it's much greater than the advertised range in the specs. 
it works really really well at long ranges so as the close ranges in this regard it is a very versatile build so uh, speaking of uh, this particular configuration as you can see i've got a bunch of ammo in here which is enough for any kind of mission uh, you will probably uh, either you or your lance one of your lance mates will get destroyed first before you will run out of this ammunition it's plenty plenty for any kind of mission we've got some heat sinks uh, single heat sinks no need for the double heat sinks because it uh, doesn't run very hard although you do need uh, these heat sinks because these lasers uh, can generate a certain amount of heat and then lastly as far as the armor is concerned it is exactly the same story as uh, with um, any of my annihilator builds which is pretty much maxed out and mostly allocated towards the front so i've talked a lot about armor allocation in the annihilator chassis in uh, many of my previous videos i'm not going to re reiterate on this subject here just uh, because i want to save some time for something else so let's go ahead and uh, take some contract see how this build performs in the actual combat and then after that I will explain you why I believe that this build is so important and why everyone should consider having at least one of these builds in their collections and most important when one should consider having this uh, mech in their collection because when matters a lot in here so let's go ahead and take a look at the contract uh, once again i'm actually located in the same system as in my previous video i did not uh, move anywhere and here we we are left with this multiple mission contract so uh, as the first mission we see this assassination contract and a fairly large combat area uh, which might uh, give us some opportunity for sniping targets at longer ranges so that you can actually see uh, how well this configuration performs in this kind of situation and then the other uh, mission we have a raid mission where i will actually show you another annihilator build with uh, some mixed loadout and then lastly in this war zone i will show you how once again this particular configuration with four uh, auto cannon burst fire uh, performs um, you know how, how many mech kills we can possibly get with this uh, the same uh, configuration the same ballistic configuration of uh, auto cannons uh, ac5 burst fire so let's go ahead and take this contract let's uh, negotiate some points one for damage two for salvage and then the rest goes to the actual payout in this case we can still use more points for the salvage because we have only 10 points for the actual sibyl payout now Mind the weather, Commander. As It'll far as uh, my landsmates are concerned, well, uh, I will obviously take this. Uh, whoa, whoa, where is this? Yeah, so I will take this uh, annihilator with four AC5 burst fire. And as far as my landsmates go, actually, you know, I will, um, I, f I will assign uh, them. Uh, the um, uh, annihilator like 
the, the, the one uh, I was using in the previous mission. Actually, you know what? No, I will uh, this time around. I will uh, to, to make things more challenging. I will actually take only two landsmates this time around. Not uh, not three. I don't think there will be a need for it because here is the plan. I will try dest uh, to destroy those enemy targets at longer ranges and then I will use two of these lance mates as bodyguards in case as if something gets close. So for that matter I will assign them these two annihilators loaded with four AC-10 burst fire. The configuration I've shown you in my previous video. Uh, the one which I refer to as a weekend toy. It is not a very practical configuration because it doesn't have a lot of ammo. Nevertheless, it's a very destructive uh, loadout. And uh, particularly it works very well at very close ranges. Which is what I'm going to be expecting from my landsmates. Uh, I, I will expect from them the uh, protection at close ranges in case if something will try to get close to me while I will be primarily working at longer ranges. That's the plan. I am not sure if it's gonna happen in this mission, but let's see. targets have given our employer nothing but problems we have been hired as a solution okay, let's go. find them Actually, and put them down for good we'll be on standby to evacuate once the job so is done we are behind this mountain so it looks like we might need to eliminate some mechs at these four waypoint locations Let's see what's going on in there. So I have only two lance mates in here. I don't think we need any more than that in this kind of scenario. Anybody there? I don't think I see any mechs. This is the artillery. It's probably not going to be there. Yeah, just an urban mech. Trying to destroy his. AC-10 first. It's rejected. Have some tank. You see, this is what I was talking about. It's a super precise weapon at long ranges. It works much better than the UAC-5 at long distances. As a matter of fact, the AC-5 burst fire is one of my favorite autocannons in this game.
it's got a great uh, damage to weight ratio. And most importantly, it's got a great uh, amount of ammunition. 80 rounds per ton. Which is uh, really great. As opposed to like uh, f f f 40 rounds per ton uh, when it comes to the AC-10. Some target fresh destroyed. targets in here. New target Panther. Engaging shared target ID. Let my lance. I'm not seeing our targets at this location. This. Make way to the next nav point. We the might have more luck there. Okay, the so far we haven't seen any of uh, our assigned target targets, point. and we have only two waypoints left. in the future. Wilco, we're moving to you now. Target acquired. few more ground targets. Target acquired. New target, Vulcan. small laser uh -huh, here's another one so where do we go let's uh, I guess let's check out that waypoint first whatever it's just a single small laser target acquired target destroyed Just so that it doesn't clock our radar. Target acquired. Target destroyed. Mm -hmm. New target Some meth in there. Incoming missile. Hiding behind the fortification. We're on it, Commander. Looks like we're at the wrong place, Commander. Our target must have given us a slip. Let's check out the other locations. That mech is about to pop. Target acquired. Oh, 
target acquired. Hiding. He's smart. Okay. So, the last waypoint. Yes, and we already see some assault mix in there. No. Okay. All right. Yes. So this is a great situation right here. We can actually try sniping those guys. Let's see if we can climb up this mountain. They are still fairly far. Ah, okay. Looks like we can we can climb up here. Okay. Excellent. So I'm gonna put my lance mates somewhere around here in case if something will decide to get close. Okay, did they spot me? No. It's Highlander. You see, it works really, really well at long ranges. It's a super precise weapon. I really, really like this AC5 first fire. One of my favorite weapons in this game. Yeah, it's gonna take some time to destroy a mech, but you see, he couldn't even fire at me because he was too far. Okay, so that was javelin. Where did they all go? Ah, okay, he's coming after us. So I will put my lance with some atlas. Okay, let's see if we can destroy this atlas before he gets too close. All right. There we go. You see? You see, he's almost done. That Atlas got toasted before he even could get close enough to fire a, a, a first shot at me. Very nice, very nice. So I will put them in there. So we'll be meeting that... Uh, who is this? The Highlander. We'll meet him over here. So I will put my... One smith in here, and the nasty turret. What's there? Some other turret. Target neutralized. Ah, and then another one. Target destroyed. Okay. Ah, looks like he's scared. He's scared now. It's okay. We'll get him. We'll get him. Maybe we'll have to get close to him this time around, but Enemy destroyed. that's fine. We can fight close as well. Let's see, we've got some t turrets in there. Let's get rid of them just in case, you know. Ah, okay, he's showing up finally. Okay, let's work on him. Let's get rid of his right arm first, because that's where... Carries uh, that PPC. I have all targets showing up as KIA on my score. Okay, this Great is it. Work. This that is it. Is ah. And then, of course, ah, the enemy dropship. The, the delayed enemy dropship. We'll get him. Let's deal with the Centurion first. Of course, and then this Victor. This is it. This is it. Now we can go home finally.
Okay, what should we take? We have 43 points. Um, I might actually take this Highlander just so I could sell it. I already have 16 of these variants. So I will just sell it and make some money. Yes, let's take the laser and then this medium laser short burst. Won't hurt. And what else? These things are nice. And then we have only one point. Let's take this jump jet. Okay. Well, obviously not a lot of mech kills because uh, we haven't uh, encountered that many mech targets on this mission. Uh, nevertheless, we've killed all the mechs we've encountered here so far. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Ah, okay, so we are in the middle of the multiple mission uh, operation. Actually, we've just completed the first mission of, uh, of this set. Your visibility will be limited out there. Let's go start repairs. So yeah, I'm gonna sell this one right away. What are the weapons here? Makes sense to sell it. Make some money. Let's start some repairs. So once again, my lance mates were piloting this uh, annihilator. Uh, uh, the, the version with four AC-10 burst fire. The one I've demonstrated in my previous video. So yeah, just, you know, three days uh, armor repair. Just only, you know, superficial damages. Now, this is the loadout once again. And these are the upgrades. Same upgrade set as I'm using on all of my... Uh, ballistic Annihilator builds. E exactly the same sit, uh, set. Some armor, just, you know, marginal 5%. Then internal structure. Faster weapon uh, cycling and then quick ammo fit. All this just, you know, to increase the firing rate of this auto cannons, basically. And then, of course, you know, just, you know, adding a 10% more of a hit capacity. These are the upgrades and these are the weapon groups. I always shoot these auto cannons either in doubles or in alpha strike. There is no reason to, to shoot them in singles because you don't really need to save ammo in here. You have plenty of ammo for any mission types. And then, of course, the lasers are grouped in pairs. Alright, so now let me explain why am I so excited about this build, why do I like it so much, and why I believe that this is a very, very important configuration. Well, you need to put this in context, okay? So, first of all, why I am liking it so much? Because it's a very accessible and it's a very budget option. Because if you look at this, AC-5 burst fire weapons, they are very, very common weapons. They are very accessible. Uh, you can find them easily. They may not be as common as the standard AC-5s. Nevertheless, they are more common than, let's say, UAC-5 weapons. Th that's for sure. And they are also less expensive. It's a very cheap it's a very basic build, the one that is very easy to maintain, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. It's a very, very cheap build once again. And let's say if you lose 
one of these weapons, you can easily replace it. So a single hit sinks. We don't even have any double hit sinks uh, in here. It's a very simple, very straightforward build. So this is one of the reasons why I like it so much. Because, like, let's uh, let's uh, take a look at this um, other build I was talking about, which is one of my favorites. Like, let's say this with uh, four uh, auto cannons, uh, LB10 X uh, solid slug auto cannons. I've shown you in a couple of my previous videos. One of my favorite builds of all times, and uh, one of the most uh, devastating builds which I have in my collection however there is one problem with this build some may say that the problem is that it doesn't have much ammo which is kind of true however I don't find this to be a problem I can do a lot of damage with the with this uh, amount of ammo it's not really a problem for me the biggest problem with this build for me perhaps is its expense. First of all, these weapons are quite expensive. If you lose one of these, it's gonna cost you a lot to repair it. The other problem, when you are early in the campaign, you are not gonna find these auto cannons that easily. Early in the campaign, like let's say if you start in uh, 3015 or uh, you know closer to that year, these auto cannons are considered as a lost tech. Chances are you are not gonna find this. And then if you find this, they are very rare, and uh, you may not even find, you know, 5 tier level. So that's, uh, th th there is a problem. Then another problem, let's say, you know, like even later in the campaign, like let's say around 3000, uh, you know, like 30s or early 40s, when you have... Uh, the first uh, annihilators available for porches, uh, which is this variant ANH dash one A. Like I said, even though, let's say, if you can find these weapons, you may not necessarily be able to afford them because chances are that you will still not have a lot of money uh, during that time. And this is exactly where this build comes in handy. Uh, early in the campaign, like let's say, um, I mean if you start in 3015, I mean you will not be able uh, necessarily find these annihilators for porches. Nevertheless, you know, by the um, 3030s, late 30s and early 40s, uh, you will uh, you will be able to find uh, available for purchase one A variant, or let's say you will uh, salvage this one from Wolf Dragoons. Uh, the uh, original version comes with the I mean one A variant comes with the AC tens, which will occupy a lot of weight, and you won't be able to use a lot of ammo. Or it will come heavily under armored. This is exactly the time where, uh, when this AC5 uh, burst fire weapons come in handy. They are cheap, they are easy to find, and uh, easy to maintain. And then you know. The other variant, it actually appears later in the campaign, the one that I like with this, let's say, four PPCs, four PPC variant. I mean, you can find PPCs, but they are still kind of expensive 
and losing one of these arms can, can uh, kind of hurt you financially. Especially when you don't have a lot of money. Yes, it's more devastating, it's more powerful mech, but at the same time, you know, it costs some money to maintain it. Uh, given the fact uh, if you lose some of these weapons. So, this is exactly the reason why I like so much this configuration with this 4 AC5 burst fire, because of its accessibility. It's very easy to access and very easy to maintain, and most importantly, it's a very, very cheap variant. It's probably the cheapest configuration you can have in this game. So this is my take on this Annihilator. And uh, besides that, like I said, I love this uh, burst fire, uh, this AC5 burst fire auto cannons because of their great range and their great precision. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, there is a King Crab variant, the hero variant, the one you salvage in one of the campaign missions, I believe it's called, like, uh, stop the lunch. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, this um, KGC dash CAR variant. That's the uh, Hero King Crab. Originally it comes with the four UAC-5s and I've downgraded those four UAC-5s for this AC-5 burst fire, for uh, the reasons I've mentioned. Don't get me wrong, I do like the UAC-5. It's a great weapon, however, it's not the weapon which I like to use as a primary weapon. It's the weapon which I like to use in conjunctions with other types of weapons, okay? But as a, main, um, as a main weapon, I would much rather prefer this AC-5 uh, burst fire, because first of all, it weighs one ton less than UAC-5, which leaves a lot of room, uh, more room for taking more ammo. So that's exactly the reason. I'm gonna have to make another video on this uh, variant because I, I believe that this configuration deserves more attention. Alright, so this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and in the next uh, uh, video we will, we will continue with this multiple mission contract. Uh, we'll take this um, uh, raid uh, mission and I will show you a slightly different uh, weapon configuration. So please stay tuned. Once again, thank you so much for watching and until the next video.